live ads. So this week is probably the most important week of the entire program. It's customer validation and data build. Uh, so we're getting on the phones and we're hitting it really hard and I know a lot of the team is struggling but it's just something we really have to do because without the customer validation there's no point in spending a whole lot of money and setting up the business if nobody wants our product or service. Before the teams took their product to market, there were some final decisions to be made around the target market. Makes sense. I mean, just don't get discouraged with a competitor in that's high tech and high touch or whatever it is that's going to, you know, that you're going to really compete head on head with. But also, yeah. don't, don't don't get fearful by uh, by small players that have been doing it for 25 years because. So Creel mentored us yesterday afternoon, and his feedback was just really important. I think he sensed that we were all a bit flat, and that's because as part of getting all this amazing validation with you know partners and industry people they come back with so much different and conflicting feedback and it sends you into a tailspin as to what to do and if you're on the right track or all the possibilities that there are and how to pick just one so Creole was really good in telling us stay the course stay committed stay assertive when you talk to people who offer the, their opinion because that's their experience take what's valuable and learn to sift through um, to find the little nuggets of gold. As James said yesterday, even if you get 1% of the pie, it's a big pie. So they might have 1%, we might end up with 5 right? You know? So I don't think we should worry. I, I, I'm not one to look over my shoulder. With the decision made for the blue team to stay on the course and focus initially on the construction industry, it was time for both teams to start validating their product with potential customers. We've been cold calling industry people, insurance people. I've had two or three calls over the continent to New Zealand. Um, actually, New, the New Zealand industry and uh, technology disruptors are, I think, more interested in what we're doing here than some of the local people. So we're going to pursue that. So we've gone global already. Annie Flanagan, it's Mike Martin from Allergen. Remember me? Um, I am doing something different and I have a question. But for some, the idea of making cold calls was literally making them cold. Uh, cold calls are, I don't know, there's like rip your toenails out and, uh, you know, run naked down Pitt Street and then um, above those two is cold calling for me. Uh, I hate impinging on people's time or feeling like I am, and I'm not. Van explained it to me like, I'm calling to give them this amazing opportunity that they're going to love and I need to get over it. And today I think, I think I actually did. Blue Team decided to hedge their bets on their customer validation for maximum reach of their product. 1,081 views. 1,081 views. How does that? Can you teach me one day how to do that? Yeah. I've boosted it to a really tight what target. Video? Today we had um, a really important daily catch up as to how we're tracking on the on the challenge. Um, and out of that, there's always a, a bit of healthy discussion around people's understanding of the criteria or our delivery against the criteria. And I suppose probably the most contentious point today was around that Facebook post. So um, what is the purpose of the post? Is it engagement? Is it recruiting likes to our page? Was it simply getting people to watch the video? Um, and everybody had a different opinion on that. All very valid. And I think what we decided in the end was we, just, we decided to back that asset and get as many people to watch that video as possible. Um, and that's where the great results were. It wasn't a page like Recruiter because if it had been, it would have been an epic fail. <laughs> With time running out, Red Team decided it was time to reassess their approach. In hindsight, we were being way too sales focused. We were trying to come up with some products or offer that we could give people to get them to the event. And it kept being about getting bums on seats, which we were all feeling a bit weird about. Um, then after um, some you know, gold with um, Krill, we got back to talking about the bigger why and the, a sense of the, a movement that we wanted to start and to get away from trying to say, please come for a coffee and tell us what you think, to 
we're on a mission, this is the mission, and um, we want to find other people who are interested in the same mission. It's, it's, a, it's called a fintech, so which is... Era, just to give everybody comfort and over time. And we're developing a product for small business owners. To be more flexible than if it was every day, or is it a block of time when it counts to you? Some of the hardest things about cold calling, I guess for now, and, and I guess I'm struggling with a bit, because we're not a, a real business yet, we're a real concept being generated, so um, uh, I'm really honest and upfront with people about that, and I think that actually helps people want to help us, which is good. Wow, we've got some great information. Yeah, really good. With only 24 hours until the customer breakfast event, the teams hit the streets of Sydney in a last minute attempt to up their attendance numbers. Blue team took target at trade suppliers, while Jacobus, for the red team, hit up the gyms of North Sydney. Today we pounded the pavement in St Leonard's, went up into many business towers around industrial parks and talked to a lot of business owners about bee cred and what it could do for them. Just give him, just give him some time, he's busy with the class. Explored, yeah, you have it was to time to see just how successful their efforts had been. Hey, so there's two parts to today. This is part number one, the customer breakfast. Um, it is pouring rain outside, it is the end of financial year, it is the school holidays and it's a Friday morning. But there are people attending, so we don't care about how many. The fact that there are people here means the breakfast is going ahead. Good morning everyone. Good a big thank you for making the effort to come on a Friday, on a rainy day, to help us refine our business in terms of limits and terms, because every business is different on terms as well. Seven day payments, 30 day payments could make all the difference to a business in terms of closing that cash conversion cycle. It's really um, about giving a sense of a business um, concept that we have. Um, Thanks mate. Thanks for coming in. The red team received some encouraging feedback from customers. Well, I thought the presentation was excellent. Um, the business model to me sounds very appealing. I think the business model is a very interesting one. I think the start of it is a good place to start by looking at small uh, businesses and providing uh, loan services and the ability to work between the small businesses and banks. With the breakfast out of the way, it was time for teams to present their validation results to the judges and potential investors. This is where the paperwork and that that cumbersome um, activity takes place in small businesses. And we purchased a database of Sydney suppliers, wholesalers and distributors. And we spoke between us to over 47 local businesses over the last 48 hours in uh, the Salernes area. We mainly from our VAs, we've looked at reputation, online presence <laughs> and industry and demographics. Really, we're going to stay the course because the possibilities of this machine are limitless. We're going to stick with our MVP, that Trojan horse, going into the suppliers, allowing them to recruit their customers for us, validate us with their peers. But we also know, based on feedback of the last few weeks, that there are so many things that we can do with this model once it, once it gets legs. So thank you very much. We welcome any questions. Right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, um, and I uh, am pleased to be able to introduce you to BizFit Plus, and we are the red team. Give you the rundown, if you don't know already, on our model and how it works. Does that idea resonate with you? And it was very much a unanimous, yes, it does, thank you. And then we broke out the discussion with some questions to get the ideas flowing. Um, it's all about convenience. They don't want it all over the place. They want a one-stop shop platform that just brings it all together and makes life easier for them. Um, we, knew this from, we knew this from week one. Trust, trust and transparency of the play is essential. He said he's an established business with two optometrist jobs. His problem is if he wants to sell it, who does he sell it to? Any new millennial that comes into the market, how do they get funding? They too, the banks don't really keen, they've got no history. So we got 78 SME owners to respond to our online survey. From that, there are 11 that uh, weren't business owners, so we just dropped them out of the survey. 
92% um, of those said that they wanted to join this movement. The economies of scope are literally endless and the economies of scale are literally endless across geographies, products and vertical. Um, we actually think you all did a great job this week with the customer validation, the way that it went to market, and there really wasn't much in it. So when it comes down to the scores on the data build, the average was on the red side 7 out of 10, blue had 8 out of 10. The landing page, we both gave you 15 out of 20. Yeah, we weren't that excited, but it was alright. <laughs> <laughs> For the breakfast, uh, red 14 out of 20, blue 12 out of 20, um, but then there was some other wonderful smoke and magic mirrors and all of that sort of things going on, which was actually around the important stuff. Did we believe in your business model? Do we think that the financial proposition has legs? Do we think it's scalable? Do we think you can go to market? And uh, red came in with a score of 76 and Blue came in with a score of 74 today. So Red, you're going home with a very slim margin win of two points. So yes, it's two, two wins, wins in a row for Red and I think before that Blue had been on a winning streak. So maybe, maybe confidence does come into it. Um, but I think that the reality is last week Red were not confident at all when they came into to the room and they still won. So I think at the heart of it, it's just a business model that the judges believe we can get investors to invest in.